want to welcome everybody uh, to the HTML5 meetup in beautiful Dallas, Texas. Hope everybody had a good set of holidays. I know I did. And today, I'm going to be uh, having a sh short little presentation here. And this is the topic, responsive email design. Uh, our speaker, our main speaker, Eric So, will be talking uh, about uh, responsive design for developers. So my little presentation here is for the hybrid developer. The person has to do design plus development. And so responsive email design is mostly front end. Why would you want to do it? 47% um, of email opens are on mobile devices. The source where I got this from, uh, emailclientmarketshare.com. Uh, if you hit that site, they have they, they have the ongoing numbers on what is going on with the uh, what how email is being opened with devices. Um, this number is as of September. But when you go to the website, it's uh, been updated to December. So it's uh, so it's ongoing. That's generally the number. Another reason, 80% of people believe an email that doesn't look good on their device. Because of course, there's the, there's the four letter S word, spam. Right? It looks like spam, just get rid of it. And um, that is the average number of times a person looks at their mobile device, 150 times a day. Glance, hopefully they're not driving a vehicle. Oh, I see, see a lot I'm looking at, uh, at the little device. So, uh, responsive design, I mentioned this quite a bit last year. Uh, responsive design is actually a fluid layout used for percentages instead of widths. Widths tend to be fixed. So, the effect is when the size of the browser, browser window changes, the design adapts to the window sizes. Probably all of you have been doing it forever. There's a lot of changing your your, uh, your browser window, so that's why I call it responsive design. And what is actually happening now is more adaptive design, all those keeping the same name as responsive design. Uh, media queries. Media queries is probably one of the most powerful uh, things that is going on with HTML5. And what you can do with um, with media queries. Uh, basically, you add changes to the CSS for a particular width. Uh, for email, it will be in the head of documents. Uh, usually for a website, this is an image of a of, uh, WordPress website. I work on WordPress quite a bit. Uh, it would be as a, as a separate page. Uh, this is an example of the code in a, in a separate page, uh, basically a portrait for a smartphone. Uh, that is the, I guess, the traditional or the classic uh, uh, piece of code that we use the reference to the link style sheet. Uh, when you're doing it for email, you have to the HTML pop the HTML after the title and the head of the document. Very straightforward, real simple. <coughs> the developer, this is this is all they said it is. The designer, well, this is this is where you begin. Uh, so it's after the title, you put in your style heading, and uh, in the red there you got rules. So the first rule you can really put in is your media query. This is a short form of the, of, the, uh, of the media query, at media query screen, and then you have your maximum width. You don't really need to specify a minimum width as the, as the mobile browsers have gotten a lot smarter. Um, and so you have in between the style tags. What is possible with responsive email design? Most of you have probably experienced this. You're looking at something. There's a before where you usually have to do pick and open, or if it's a, if it's 960, all you do all you get is like a corner 
where you get part of part of the image because it's a fixed 960 scale. Uh, with the with the after here, for those of you in the back who might have a little trouble reading, you can change your hierarchy, you can change your navigation, uh, you can enlarge your fonts, uh, you can change your colors, you can change your layout, uh, you can scale your images, you can uh, add padding, and uh, you can change or hide content. So a few of the rules that are in there, this, that's your basic code. Uh, in this example, I used table. Now, um, with, the, with the designers, they say, no, you shouldn't use tables, no, you shouldn't use tables. Well, if you use tables uh, correctly, mostly, most developers know how to use tables correctly. Yeah. Don't necessarily use them for styling, but if you have a lot of, a lot of data, don't want to put it into, um, into the table. Now, with the, this is what makes it so powerful now is that with the media query, you've already addressed what it's going to look like in the device. So you have the yes, have the table, navigation, and um, it's not really important uh, because of the, 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 we don't know what device we'll be looking at whether it's a smartphone, a tablet, or even up to 60-inch uh, HDTV. Uh, that's the code to enlarge your fonts. You have the body header. Um, we get into that a little bit later. Um, this one is to enlarge the fonts. Uh, change colors. You have the, in the cell, the TV, you have the body copy. You can put in whatever color you want. Uh, you can use um, either letters or you can use the alphanumeric color system. You can also add padding. <coughs> so in the body, you can add padding to the 15 pixels. It's not really important because, of course, it will, it will always adjust to the, to the device that is being viewed on. Uh, you can change or hide content. That is the little piece of code there for the cell, you know, the cell and then make a class and then this one. The HTML5, so this is in the body of the, of the document itself. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the CSS uh, has to equal the type of container or element within the HTML5. So in this example, uh, it filled it in. You have the, the cell, the body header, font size, and then within the table itself, the body within the table, the table row, cell, and the other alignment, and the big thing is, of course, the TV, the cell, and the, and the class, the body header. Pretty straightforward. If you're a developer and you've done HTML5 in the past, yeah, pretty straightforward. Now, the supported apps with responsive design, like anything else in the HTML5, it's, it's new. <coughs> so these are the five devices that we know that it works on. Uh, uh, iOS Mail, Android, Windows Phone 7.5, uh, and the BlackBerry devices. Now, this is where it gets really a little bit strange, because these are the unsupported apps responsive design. Um, Gmail doesn't do responsive design in any format, and, um, and, and Windows is the big surprise. So Windows Phone 7, Windows Phone 8 does not do responsive design, but 7.5 does do responsive design. Uh, I kind of have to decide on that. Uh, and of course, the BlackBerry, that's an old version. Okay, and that's basically it uh, the responsive design. Uh, my next little presentation will be on responsive images. That is also one of the things that we do with email design. However, if you have a website and you have large images, you don't necessarily want to put them into any of smartphone, especially if they're on. Uh, uh, 
specifically for um, email clients. why you might want to do responsive design is that if you're very much into Pinterest or your business is really into Pinterest, that's where um, images and, uh, and infographics come in. You know, if you want to shoot those out as uh, you know, in, in its form, you'll want to do only do responsive design for your, for your business or for what you might have for Thank you.